What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to be talking about the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm watching for this final week of December in 2018. What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to be talking about the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade for this final week in 2018, finishing off December in 2018. But before we do get into this, for all you new viewers out there, my name is Stas and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long term investing, and my personal philosophies and strategies when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market so for those of you guys that want to learn more about that feel free to drop a like leave a comment and subscribe and follow me on instagram as well as on twitter and join our discord group chats as well as our facebook group all of those are linked down below in the description box and if you guys want to be in contact with me and about 365 other investors and traders on a day-to-day -day basis i highly advise you to join our discord group chat it's a very helpful community in there we're talking about trading investing stocks strategies, news, and just networking with each other to help each other become the best possible traders and investors that we can on a day-to-day -day basis. And again, all of those links to the Instagram, Twitter, the Discord, Facebook are all linked down below. And uh, let's get started with today's video. So before we do talk about some of the stocks and ETFs and some different scenarios that I think can happen this week for the market, let's just take a look at the overall market, the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ. And this is something that I do before every single video, pretty much for every single video, so we can get a better understanding of where the market is at, what the technicals are telling us, and you know, so we can make a prediction where the market is potentially going in the short term. So you know, obviously, guys, we've been selling off like crazy over the past couple of weeks since the beginning of October, and this past week and a half, two weeks has gotten even worse, right? We can see here, you know, ever since December 10th, once we broke the support on the Dow Jones, the support at about $24,500, we've sold off nearly 2,000 points in the Dow Jones in the past two weeks alone, we've lost 8% in the Dow Jones. And, you know, this past trading week, you know, this past trading week, I believe this past Friday, not this past Friday, the Friday before that, we had a 500 point loss. And then the, pa the next Monday, I believe we had another 500 point loss in the Dow Jones. We had an even day or something like that. We had a bounce back day, but then we had another red day followed by another red day. So these red days have been piling up guys, and it's really getting us closer to the bear market in the Dow Jones and the S&P 500. And the NASDAQ is actually technically already in a bear market and we're going to be seeing that uh, in a little bit here but in terms of the Dow Jones what do I think could happen this week well you know on this 184 hour chart we do notice that the Dow Jones is at a support level from a couple of months back I believe this one was from over a year ago actually and we noticed that the Dow is oversold in terms of this RSI level and whenever we use indicators we don't just use one indicator to base our decisions, but we like to just take every single indicator and you know form an opinion based off multiple of them, right? And this is something that I personally do. I don't like relying on one indicator to make a decision or a prediction, but the fact that we are looking a little bit oversold and we are at a support level right now, that could indicate that we might see a bounce back in the Dow Jones. And if we're judging on that support level that I'm talking to you guys about, you know, the ones from this past uh, February and March, we blew, we blew past those, obviously. And now we're testing the one from about, you know, September 18th of 2017, almost about, you know, a year and three, four months ago. So this is the next support guys, you know, I'm going to be watching this very closely for the Dow Jones. I talked about this in the video on Friday, but keep an eye on this level, very key indicator and very key technical, uh, you know, spot for the Dow Jones. And, you know, if we are able to hold above this and we do start to see some buying power, you know, we could see a bounce back day this upcoming Monday 
or Tuesday, since, you know, pretty much the whole week last week was one big red week, and the week before that as well, we've seen, like I showed you guys, an 8% loss in the Dow Jones, so a bounce back day wouldn't be too out of the ordinary for me, but let's say we do break the support, you know, that's not going to be a good sign whatsoever, with the next support being at around 21,500, and I've stated in many videos that I don't think it's too far-fetched that we do get to this level of especially with all the, you know, all the uncertainty in the stock market right now. And, uh, you know, that's why I'm just playing everything by ear. I'm not really swing trading at all. I'm keeping my capital, uh, pretty much secured because I'm day trading and I'm keeping it in cash, right? I'm not in a position overnight for most of the times, right? So, you know, that's a very key indicator right here, guys, technical spot. So keep an eye on that for a possible reversal or, you know, a bounce back play there. In terms of the S&P 500, very similar, guys. We broke the supports from this past, uh, you know, February and March. And now we're testing this trend line that I talked to you guys about a couple of videos ago, I believe it was the video on Friday, I believe, or Thursday, but the fact that we are holding this technical uh, indicator right here, and I think you can see it on the 20-day uh, chart, we're holding this trend line, or 20-year chart rather, we're holding this trend line very nicely, we noticed it's been a support since the 2008 crash, since down here at $666, we bounced again at about $1,100, bounced again at about $1,900, and now we're holding above it here at about $2,400. So very critical technical spot right here for the S&P 500 and also above this 50 simple moving average on this 20 year, uh, you know, one month chart here. So this is a huge pullback in the S&P 500, guys. If we're just judging from the top right now, you know, we're down about 17%. So we're almost at that bear market for the S&P 500. And what constitutes a bear market, guys? Uh, you know, pretty much when an index falls 20% or more from any given peak. So at this point, we're almost there with 2% left. And just like the Dow Jones, we've been having terrible days this, these past two weeks. Since we broke this support on the S&P, we're down about 8% to where we, we uh, closed the market on Friday. So very bloody for the S&P 500. And uh, just like the Dow Jones, guys, at a very key critical technical level and if we do end up bouncing above that trend line that I showed you we could have a couple of green days in a row who knows right we might have one bounce back day one two bounce back days but if we break below this guys that's a very bad technical indication and uh, we're, we might just be getting deeper into a bear market if that does end up happening and the Nasdaq look I told you guys earlier it's already in a bear market, right? This one's already in a bear market. If we're looking at the 180 day from where it closed or the low at about 6030 this past Friday, you know, up to the peak of 7700, we're already down 21.6% from the peak in October in the Nasdaq uh, composite here. And, uh, you know, very bad guys. This is, you know, mostly due to Apple dragging down the Nasdaq. You know, it's dragging down obviously all the main in indexes because it is a part of the main indexes and just you know all the large caps are doing terrible right now which is really just expected when the markets are doing this this bad right and most of the large caps a lot of the big name tech stocks like Facebook Apple Amazon and Netflix they're actually down even more than what the indexes are down what this per this this means in my personal opinion is that you know the value stocks that haven't gotten hit that bad like McDonald's Johnson and Johnson well Johnson and Johnson got hit bad because of a scandal, but it was doing pretty well up until that scandal. Um, you know, these value plays, the, the quote unquote safer plays out there in the market, those have been holding up a little bit better than these, you know, larger cap tech stocks, these bigger companies in the stock market. And that's what I really think has been holding up the indexes in this 50 to 20% drop range. Because once these value plays, if they come down, you know, if they lose another 5, 10%, right? 
that's going to show more on the indexes, and the indexes are going to be looking way worse, right? They could be down 25, maybe even 30%, right? And maybe that's a little bit too far fetched, but I'm just giving you guys, you know, what I'm, 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 you know, I'm grabbing out of this, and you know, what, what I'm, what I'm getting from these technicals, and what's just going on in the overall stock market from my perspective. So some key support levels for the Nasdaq stemming a couple months back, even over a year ago. Well, you know, we broke below this one. We broke below this one from this past 2018 early March uh, you know early February right around that time so what we're testing right now is the one at about six thousand dollars from this past uh, this past October in 2017 so almost a year and about two months ago uh, you know the support that we were at at that time period so guys six thousand is a very key level for the NASDAQ and just keep an eye on that and we're again we're all at all these indexes are at very technical uh, very key technical levels right now and if they do end up holding you know we could see a bounce back and it's all about just keeping an eye on the futures keeping an eye on large caps pre-market hours see what's going on before we can make a better decision because right now all I'm using is judging off of a you know, judging off of this past market data, but once we do get some futures knowledge, what's going on in the futures market, and we get some large caps, uh, you know, pre-market hours, we can understand more of what's going to happen next week. And remember, guys, this Tuesday, it's Christmas, the market is closed, so keep an eye on that, remember that, and uh, let's just talk about very quickly my strategy and what I'm looking to trade for this upcoming week. So due to the market being closed this Tuesday, you know, Monday, I don't know what's going to really happen, right? I'm not sure if there's going to be, you know, crazy volatility. There could be, right? There could be because there has been, right? So I wouldn't be too surprised if we did see some crazy volatility. But I wouldn't be surprised if the market was kind of, you know, kind of stale on Monday, stale if that makes any sense, right, kind of boring, right, because it's day before a holiday, you know, I'm sure a bunch of people are doing shopping, right, who who, who knows, right, who knows, there might not be that much movement in the overall stock market, but it might be crazy like I did say, and I'm always ready, I'm going to be at the computer obviously trading and uh, just waiting for opportunities to open up to me, but from now guys, you know, what am I going to be doing? What am I watching for this upcoming week? Well, you know, I'm going to be watching, you know, obviously TVIX. So this is my active watch list right here. I'm going to be watching TVIX, which is a market ETF that goes up in price when the markets are selling off. This is one that I've been trading a bunch recently. This one is very similar to SQQQ. These are both ETFs that do very well when the markets are selling off. And, uh, you know, if we do end up breaking those key support levels, guys, that we talked about in the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ. I think these are going to be very good plays on Monday and even heading into the, you know, after the Christmas holiday. So I'm going to be keeping an eye on these very, very closely. And, uh, you know, I'm just sticking to what's been working because I've been trading TVIX a lot. I don't trade SQQQ as much, but it's a very similar moving ETF to TVIX. So I really could trade that one as well if I wanted to, but I'm just sticking to what's been working and what I've been seeing success with over the past couple of weeks in this huge volatility stage that we've been in. So what happens if the market does end up bouncing back up tomorrow? Well, if that does happen, I might play TQQQ. And this is an ETF that goes up when the markets go up. Very, very simple, right? These are market ETFs. I talk about these all the time and the group trades them a lot. I trade them a lot. And I like sticking to them again because they work. So we noticed that this one's obviously been on a downtrend, making lower lows, making Making lower highs and the fact that it just pushed down to a lower low with the resistance being at this 180 50 simple moving average range you know if we do see some buying power in the markets this week heading into 2019 especially you know this one could be a decent play back up to <clears throat> These, you know, simple moving averages here, maybe at $40, maybe at $38, who knows, right? Because if we do end up seeing some push up here, again, we've seen it in the past, make a lower low and then see some buying power, see some push back up, giving it some nice margin, right? You know, if we played this one on this bounce back, we would have made 15%, right? An example here again, right? Made a lower low, we could have made that push back up 15%. So, you know, waiting for that potential uh, you know, hike up in the overall markets is obviously going to send this up and we could potentially
potentially trade that. So again, these are all based on different scenarios, right? If the market does well tomorrow, if it bounces on those supports, support levels, if large caps are moving pre-market hours, if the futures are pointing up, this could be a good scenario, right? But if the markets are breaking the support levels or pushing down, you know, TVIX, SQQQ, and uh, just shorting the large caps, playing put options is what's going to be a good strategy, right? You know, I don't talk about options. Really, I don't really talk about options at all on this channel, but this is something that I've been experimenting with and been practicing with over over the past couple of months and then once I do get a little bit better at it I'm going to start making videos on this and this is something that really helps when the markets are extremely volatile and especially when the markets are going down because if the markets are going down in price you can play put options on your long-term positions to hedge against those positions meaning that you know when the markets are selling off you can make a put option against one of your largest uh, investments so you're making money as that stock is going down right you're making money as it goes down you're making money as it goes down right so so you're technically not even losing money on the loss from your investment. And then when you're making money on that put option, right, you could take that money and then buy the shares lower in value, right? Let's say you buy Apple or let's say you own 100 shares. Well, it doesn't matter how many shares you own. Let's say your average cost of Apple is $100, let's say, to make it easy, right? And, you know, you have a put option on, on Apple at $80, meaning that you think Apple is going to go to $80, uh, in a certain amount of time, let's say six months, right? And Apple does end up going to $80. You make money on however many contracts you bought in that put option. And then you can take that money and buy back the Apple shares at $80. And you technically lost very little or you even made money, you, you made money on uh, most of the time, right, if you played it right, and then you can, again, take that money, buy the shares at the bottom, and just build a stronger position without really losing much money. You guys you guys kind of understand what I'm saying. A lot of people, uh, you know, a lot of people trade options out there in the group. A lot of people are trying to learn, and, you know, I've been learning myself. I've been playing with a very small account behind the scenes, and I do want to bring that onto the channel, and let me know down below if you guys are interested in me making videos on options i would love to do that honestly if there is demand for it i'll make videos on options but uh you know very simple for this week guys i'm not going to keep it too complex market etfs right we, we want to see where the market is going to be pushing are we going to continue to sell off heading into 2019 you know a lot of the other ones that i'm going to be playing are you know potentially apple and facebook if we do see a bounce back in the overall markets uwt and dwt have been very strong uh in and out ETFs that I've been trading over the past two weeks, uh, to be exact with you guys. And these are crude oil ETFs, and they trade based upon slash CL. And whenever slash CL is going up in price, UWT is going up in price because this is the bull ETF. But whenever uh, crude oil is going down in price, DWT is doing very, very well. And this is clearly, uh, you know, the bear ETF because crude oil has been getting crushed over the past couple of weeks. It's seen one of the biggest sell-offs in the past 10 years, I believe. Don't quote me on that. But, you know, ever since we've seen the break of this uh, support in crude oil, we've just continued the downtrending pattern. So as of now, guys, this one's downtrending in price. It's getting rejected by the 50 simple moving average here on this chart. We can see it very cl clearly on this other time frame as well. And in my opinion, guys, DWT is going to be a very good play as long as we're selling off in crude oil. And once we see a reverse in crude oil, a reverse in the technicals, right, meaning that it would break out of this 50 SMA resistance, that's going to be a good time to hop into UWT and ride that one back up to get some, uh, you know, get some of that money back that it's been losing over the past couple of months, right? So um, what else am I looking to trade this week, guys? The JNUG ETF's looking very solid, and I'm going to show you guys what I'm talking about in terms of this one. Gold futures are on an uptrend. You know, the past, uh, on this 180 chart, guys, we can tell the past three weeks, four weeks, pretty much two months actually, have been a very strong, uh, been very strong for gold futures on a technical basis, right? We were downtrending here back in June, July of 2018. We started to consolidate here very strongly at about 1,200, and now we're reversing the trend. We're making higher lows, higher highs, and, 
you know, we pushed for a higher high at 1270 on gold futures, and now we're selling off. What do we want to see now, guys, is either a bounce on this 50 SMA or a bounce above this previous support here at about 1240, which means that it would be making another higher low. Higher low meaning that it's making, you know, it's making a uh, continuous higher lows, meaning that it's uptrending in price continuously, right? Does that make any sense? It should. It's, it's pretty simple, guys, if we're just judging off this chart, right? You know, we want the goal of futures to continue this trend of making higher lows. And if we bounce at this range, that could be a good entry point for JNUG. So JNUG and JDST, mostly JNUG, guys, since, it's, since it is showing signs of a reversal, I'm watching very, very, very closely. So, you know, these are the main ones I'm watching, guys. I know it's very repetitive at times. You know, I'm, I know it's very simple, but I'm just being real with you guys. And I'm just telling you what I trade on a day-to-day -day basis, right? These market ETFs, JNUG, JDST, you know, UWT, DWT, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, Google for potential bounce back plays. You know, these are what I trade all the time, right? I'm sure a lot of you guys might think this is a little bit repetitive, but it's the truth, right? And, you know, obviously I'm going to be watching drip and gush, uh, you know, natural gas and, uh, you know, U gas and D gas as well, because those have been ridiculously volatile. And I'm just looking to consistently profit on a basket of ETFs and stocks that I trade all the time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and join our Discord and Facebook. And please do your own research, guys, before you invest and trade. Don't trade or invest you know based on my opinion or anybody else's out there please 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 stick to that i'll catch you in the next video peace out